Okay, so Ireland win the first game of the tournament. Not what I thought was going to happen. I thought this was going to be France's day. But there's a few reasons that this obviously happened. I think the obvious one that we all saw here today was the cards. Yes, uh, Williamson gets two yellow cards within the game. The first one, I could probably argue, you know, maybe it's just a penalty, you know, head high, maybe. I was kind of glad he only got a yellow card for it. The second one... Dude, dumb. Keelan Doris is already going down. Uh, he hits him basically in the head. I mean, it's just like he wanted an early shower. He's got no one to blame for himself on that regard. Uh, and it really, having that first yellow card really gave Ireland an advantage. Uh, it kind of put them on the back foot, put France on the back foot, that is. It allowed Ireland to score a try early, get, a, get ahead early, which was really, really key. Uh, especially as it was at France as well. Listening to the anthems, Ireland didn't seem like they had many people in the crowd. I was thinking, boy, if France get ahead here, this is going to be a messy affair. But end of the day, uh, Ireland get that early lead off the yellow card, almost gifted to them, and uh, they played really well in general. Uh, France looking a little bit lost as well. Let's get into some specifics here. So let's start the core, okay? Core is obviously the scrum. Uh, France, this was a, a rare area of dominance for them, and I want to talk about why this was. Um, obviously, the Irish front row is very, very experienced, and they're usually great scrummagers. But I just noticed something weird. Like, if you're looking at it from a bird's eye point of view, it looked like, so we've got Porter here, we've got Sheehan here, we've got Furlong here. Porter was almost stood back a little bit, and Furlong was stood forward a little bit. And that's never a good position for a, uh, for a front row to get into, into a scrum. Usually you want the loose head leading and you want the tight head kind of nestled in between the hooker so that he's got two forwards that can come into him. Basically, if you're like a tight head and you're like sat backwards, it allows the hooker and the loose head to come into you and then you can kind of take them both at the same time and drive them forwards. If you're the tight head and you're further forward like tight furlong was, you're almost kind of exposed because you've got two people driving onto you and you're taking both of that force of both the hooker and the loose head. And this, the Irish scrum just kept collapsing and it was just, it was confounding. For three front rowers that are so experienced, I was just amazed that they kept doing it. And uh, one to watch, I mean, Andrew Porter for me is very hit and miss. And when he hits, he hits in the scrum, but when he misses, boy, I, and I don't want to put it solely down on him, it is purely a front row organizational thing. Uh, obviously, big story, Johnny Sexton is gone, Jack Crowley comes in, and I thought Jack Crowley had a uh, good, with promise, not great game. Uh, he, seem, he, he seems to have the same responsibility that Johnny Sexton does in attack. Uh, seems to be that focal point off the first, first fave set piece, and he executed some moves brilliantly off of that. Uh, he found spaces in attack. Uh, he looked a, a, very inventive, which is really cool to see. I think one of the big worries I had for Ireland at their flight half shirt coming in is that they wouldn't have the same inventiveness going forward in attack. Jack Crowley showed he's got promise in that regard, and he's a young guy, right? So they've got a lot of potential there and a lot of promise, and he looks like he's filled into that shirt really, really nicely. Not perfect, missed some kicks, got charged down once or twice, but if you're looking at this as an Ireland fan and you've just beaten France the way you have, arguably one of the best teams in the world, and you've got your fly half playing like this, and he's young. I mean, holy moly. I mean, Ireland, have, it, it could be that Ireland now have three fly halves in a row that are generational talents. I'm getting carried away. Jack Crowley played well, showed a lot of promise. Let's see what we get from him in the future. Uh, what else have we got here? I thought both, I thought both attacking malls for both sides were really good. Uh, Ireland's line-out was a lot more organised than France's line-out. France's line-out just seemed like scatty and broken up constantly. Um, they never felt like they could get good moves off of a set piece. They managed to score some tries off of it um, because of just constant phase play afterwards. They never were great off of first phase. Everything just seemed scrappy. It was all over the place. Um, they really missed Dupont. And, I mean, he is the best player in the world, obviously. So there is a big, big issue there. Uh, Luku came in, he, had, he was okay, but he didn't boss it in the same way. I think it was a lot more down to Jalabert in terms of uh, attacking organisation. Well, it was between Jalabert and Luku, and I felt like neither of them really kind of grabbed the game by the scruff of the neck in terms of attack, and it just led to, like, uh, scrappiness. Um, sometimes they showed promise in attack. Jalabert had some moves that were great. 
And I think if you're friends, I think this is gonna be a chance for you to try someone new, go for someone different at scrum half, keep Jalabert at fly half. And I think Legaric is probably, you know, Luku, did, did, he, I, he feels like a fill-in, man, you know? And that scrum half position for France seems like it's so important in terms of what they do in attack. Vigaric has been a bit of a little, I was about to say spitfire, I don't think that makes any sense. But he's been a bit of a live wire playing for Racing 92 in that scrum half position. Um, yeah, give him the start next week, why not? I think he's, it's worth giving him a try at least for sure. Uh, some of the bits and pieces. Uh, I really like Muvaka. Muvaka, I'm saying the name wrong. Francis Hooker. Uh, he really reminds me of like a young Scott Brit. Uh, guy can run with ball in hand really well. Uh, great in the tight as well as the loose. Uh, he's always there putting in hard work in terms of rocking and mauling and everything like that. Um, obviously the line outs weren't so great as I've already mentioned, but I, he was a highlight for me. I thought he was really good. And uh, I guess as a final note, I think we all kind of came into this game thinking it would come down to who's got the better attack. But I really think this game came down to who had the better defence. France's def defence was solid for the most part, but at the key points it just had gaps that just created tries. I'm thinking Dante getting caught like in no man's land, like stepping all over the place. Um, thinking of other phases as well, like the mall defence on the last second to last try or the last try was just like, non-existent and Sheehan just goes walking in. And compare that to Ireland's defence on the other side of things, Pio Romani going over uh, and Andrew Porter going over. Obviously, I've just talked about Andrew Porter not do, doing so great in the scrum, but Andrew Porter going over in terms of jackaling the ball. Uh, James Lowe doing his classic, holding people up in tackles and causing turnovers. I think that the real difference between these two teams, obviously, cards aside, was just the defensive organisation and the defensive commitment from Ireland compared to France. Um, and I really cannot... Uh, I cannot overstate the importance of uh, Ireland having that early advantage because of the yellow card at the beginning of the game uh, that just set them off from, uh, just gave them momentum throughout the whole game to keep going and get the win. So that's it. Uh, quick video here. Uh, going to be doing the other reviews later in the weekend as well. Going to go see some friends, hang out, watch the game with them. So that's why we're getting this uh, video in a dark room. I swear I haven't been watching the game like this. I had the TV on and the light, but the lighting I couldn't get sorted. It's fine. Anyway, see you next time.